Town with one group of parcels at 814 and 816 West Congress Street to remain commercial heavy with a conditional use permit to allow a bakery. City Ordinance 27-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by adjusting the manning table and budgeted pay rates of positions within City Court. City Ordinance 28-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to enter into an active deposit on behalf of the Lafayette Police Department for K-9 heiress to Corporal Paul Crozer. City Ordinance 29-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $23,517.38 received from the United States Marshals Service and appropriating within the Lafayette Police Department. City Ordinance 30-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget and manning tables of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to provide funding for increase in pay rate pursuant to Civil Service Rule 4, Section 1.9 within the Communications Department. City Ordinance 31-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council, amending the fiscal year 21-22 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $3,000 from the code reference materials account to the camera equipment Orson RPL3 account to replace three cameras and necessary equipment within the Lafayette Fire Department Fire Prevention Division. City Ordinance 32-2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council declaring the Gerald Drive Cooley Phase 1 project. I think that's the one that she pulled. Number 41, yes. So that would be separate, a separate. Okay. So we go to 42. number 42. Okay. Third, City Ordinance 33, 2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $10,000 in excess funds from Flusher Truck New 2 Budget Line Item to Ice Machine RPL 1 Budget Line Item for additional funding needing, needed for the Drainage Department. City Ordinance 34, 2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $2,439,607.20 received from the Shuttered Venue Operating Grant 59.075 and authorizing the transfer of these funds to the HPAC Fund 204, the HPAC Reserve Fund 205, and the City General Fund 101 and appropriating within the Parks, Arts, Recreation, and Cultural Department. Are we pulling 44? City Ordinance 35, 2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending fiscal year 21-22 operating and capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to make appropriations adjustments within the Utilities Department. All right, any council discussion on these items not pulled? I'm not seeing any. Any uh, public comments? Uh, yes, ma'am, we do have speakers for some of the items for that, were, that were read in Globo, the first of which is item 32, uh, CO23, with reference to 114 Matthews Boulevard. We have two speakers signed in, Dwayne Johnson and Sheila Johnson. Good evening. I live at 99 Matthews, which is actually directly across the street from 114, the property they're talking about turning into commercial. Pick your microphone up just a little bit. Thank you. It's actually the property they talked about turning into commercial parking lot. And Mercy Kitchen, which is the owner that's trying to do it, lives next door. They're the ones who's trying to turn that property into commercial. We have no parking problem on the street. They're complaining there is. Before that, the property was Bonton Grill. Bonton Grill was there five years, I think six months before. They used to have teeny Tuesdays. There was parking up and down the street. Didn't bother anybody. The problem we have is big trucks. I, not too long ago, three months ago, had a truck in my driveway I had to file a claim with that was delivering to this restaurant. When I approached the restaurant, I was told that it was my problem, not theirs. 
my driveway and their driveway exactly line up with each other. We've literally had to have the driveway blocked every day to keep trucks out of it because we were told this is our problem. The house that they're trying to turn a parking lot into, the backyard floods. So if y'all do grant this, please fix the drainage, make sure it's concreted, put up a fence. Their driveway comes out on Matthews, but they also have another driveway that comes in on Barrow School Road. The driveway on Matthews is being utilized for delivery, which is fine, but they're utilizing my driveway also for delivery, which means it has to stay blocked 24 and seven. My wife and I have to constantly go around the blockage we have in my own driveway. Hmm. I'm not gonna get on property value, which is gonna bring my property value down. We had neighbors go to the zoning meeting, basically, it was approved. They had no plan. I don't know if they still have a plan. We have not been able to see a plan. All the businesses along Verrot are on the corner, including Mercy Kitchen. The property they're trying to zone into commercial is on the side of them encroaching into a neighborhood. So that's my gripe. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Sheila Johnson regarding the same issue, 114 Matthews. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I typed mine out because I'm not so good of a speaker, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to read from what I have. Um, of course, my name is Sheila Johnson, and I live at 99 Matthews. Um, I'm here in opposition of the rezoning for the 114 Matthews Boulevard to commercial property. I have lived in the neighborhood for over five years now. I actually moved there shortly after Bontal Grill opened. So I knew the restaurant situation when I moved into the neighborhood. And to be honest, um, me and my husband are a little happy because whenever we needed food, we can actually go across the street and have something when it's needed. So it was a good thing. Um, it's my understanding that the rezoning stems from parking issues, concerns, down Matthews Boulevard between the restaurant owners and the neighborhood residents. I can't speak for the neighbors, but I can speak for myself. And the fact that I live directly across from the restaurant, as my husband said, our driveways are exactly across from each other. My husband and I have had issues, have not had issues with vehicle parking along the side of the road. Our driveway was never blocked and we could always get to and from our home when needed. We had one incident wherein there was a mail our mailbox was damaged by a patron leaving the restaurant. And sometimes there were party buses and group buses that tried to park in our driveway, which issues were resolved uh, with the assistance of the owner of Bonton Grill. They always helped us out if we had any problems or issues. It was good. The issue today that I have with Mercy Kitchen um, are vendors using my driveway as an unloading zone, which, is never, which had never been an issue before. Since Mercy Kitchen moved into the neighborhood, the use of my driveway has gotten so bad that we've had to block the front of the driveway with no trucks allowed signs, stepping, uh, stopping vendors from assessing, I'm sorry, accessing the driveway. We even had to invest in a security system to assure the safety of our property since we both work during the day. The owner or owners of Mercy Kitchen knew the parking situation when they when the building was purchased. So why should the neighborhood change to suit their needs? In all honesty, if you approve this rezoning, Mercy Kitchen will be the only beneficiary. This will not guarantee parking on the side of the street will stop. This will not guarantee my driveway will not be used as an unloading zone. This will not guarantee damage will never happen again to my property. This will not guarantee they will not expand the restaurant, thus limiting parking once again but it will guarantee the value of my property will decrease if this rezoning is approved. So I ask you, what are the benefits for the neighborhood by approving this rezoning? Now with that said, I have one request of the council. If you do appro approve the rezoning and Mercy Kitchen's development plan, my request is that all access to the restaurant from Matthews Boulevard be taken away. 
The restaurant already has a back entrance off of Verrat School Road. Therefore, I ask this council to require their plans to include a front entrance to the restaurant off of Verrat School Road, thus closing off access to Matthews Boulevard altogether. Without having direct access to the restaurant, this should Excuse discourage- me. I'm sorry, your time is up. Okay. But, but I thank you for coming and for bringing this to our attention. Um, the, we understood that there was an issue with parking on Matthews. And so I, this is, since this is intro, we will definitely do our homework to figure out how we can address this. Um, is there anyone here from Mercy Kitchen that would like to, Mary, would you like to, you got your computer, it looks like you want to say something. <laughs> I was going to tell you on Help the us zoning out with recommendation from the Zoning Commission did require no access from Matthews Boulevard and a site proof fence six foot high um, that will be installed along Matthews Boulevard. Okay, so no access to Matthews. Correct. With, no, with there this will be new no access from Matthews Boulevard, so they'd have to enter. Is that both the restaurant and the new parking line or just the new parking line? It does not contemplate, but there'll be a site proof fence, so. Okay. Think well, we'll have to access from the restaurant to Matthews already. Obviously, maybe that should be contemplated to eliminate that. Y'all can always add conditions as well. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll all definitely right. look at it. Thank y'all. Thank, thank you. you, and thank you for coming. All right. I'm not seeing any other discussion on that one. Um, okay. We have one more. <laughs> Um, we have the next speaker is Stephanie Touchet. Oh, She's speaking to item number 38 with reference to uh, the U U United States Marshal Services budget revision with the Lafayette Police Department. Okay. That's item number 38. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skinner Touchet, and uh, I'm just a concerned Acadianian. And I want to talk to you, Council, tonight about how important our police is and how important our sheriffs are. And I thank you so much for giving them money because in a day of tyrannical government and evil countries everywhere, we're in serious trouble and we need that. Our government's very tyrannical in nature. Right now, a lot of them are bought off our Congress and our Senate by communist China and we know their ties to communist China. So we're in grave danger. The military in China have come out and said, they're not shy about it, that they want to kill every single American and they own our universities, they own our congressmen, they own Hollywood, they own, they're buying up all our farmland. So, and also our government's been very tyrannical with COVID and they made that COVID in a, a lab in China. Okay, they made it and our taxpayer money is funding that. So now we have all this chaos, all this rioting, all these homeless people, migrants are coming over the border. That's the United Nations is trying to take over this country with communist China. So they have replaced migration, all these illegals, the third world's flooding this country. So we need our police and we need our sheriffs and because they uphold an oath to the constitution. We have a lot of treasonous traitors in Washington and we don't want the FBI or the United Nation or the feds or communist China to come and take over Acadiana if something were to happen in this country. So I would like for you to maybe get Sheriff Mack with some of that money. He's famous and he's a constitutional sheriff and he comes in and he talks for a low fee. He'll talk to our police and he'll talk to our sheriffs about how they have more power than the government the governor and they have more power than our local sheriffs than the president and so we can protect the Acadiana with our sheriffs and with our policemen and it's very important that we come together as a community and you great council and we start looking towards the future of these possibilities and let's go to the constitution and rebuke all evil in Jesus' name I say thank you Thank you very much. And finally, um, item number 44, Anita Begno signed in to support that ordinance with reference to the Utilities Department budget revision. That concludes the speakers, Madam Chair. All right, so I'm gonna like to call for a vote then to introduce in Globo items 34 to 40, 42 and 42 to 44. Did I miss oh, any? Wait, no, wait 32. 32. So it's item 32. 32, not 33. 34 to 40, 40, and then 42 to 44. 
Yeah. Yes, correct. I don't think I can. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, ma'am. We missed any and we got uh -huh. it. All right, let's call for a vote on those numbers. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. The motion to introduce in global items 32, 34 through 40, and 42 through 44 is approved. Okay, so we need to ask Cindy, can you read number 33? And City I guess 40, okay. 41 also, sorry. Okay. City Ordinance 24 2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the Lafayette Development Code, so as to reclassify case number 0 and 20. 22-000596 Birch Drive rezoning located generally north of Birch Drive, west of Adelwood Boulevard, and south of Maple Drive. The particular parcels being rezoned from commercial heavy with conditions to commercial heavy with reduced conditions. I need a motion and a second. I have a motion for Mr. Lazard, a second for Mr. Nakan. Uh, there's a proposed amendment to include the conditions related to parking, landscaping, fencing, and signage. Um, all right, I have a motion from Mr. Nakan and a second from Ms. Abair on that amendment. Any council discussion? I'm not seeing any on the amendment. Um, any public comments on this amendment? No, ma'am. All right, let's call for the vote for the council to amend. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. The motion to amend to include the conditions is approved. All right, any dis council discussion on the ordinance as amended? I'm not seeing any. Any public comments no, on the yeah. ordinance as amended? Let's go ahead and uh, vote to, for the, from the council to introduce as amended. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. The motion to adopt, to introduce as amended is approved. City Ordinance 32, 2022, in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council declaring the Gerald Drive Cooley Phase 1 project a public necessity and authorizing the acquisition of the necessary rights of way and movable property and other property rights requisite to the construction of said project, either on an amicable basis or through the use of the expropriation process if necessary. I need a motion and a second. I have a motion from Ms. Abair, a second from Mr. Lazard. Um, council discussion, Ms. Abair, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe there's someone from Public Works here. Ch I believe Chad was supposed to stay behind and answer some questions. Or did he step out? Well, Sidra, I know you can answer some of these questions too, uh, so we can make. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, here you go, Sidra. You're on. And Josh, just put his oh. mic on too. Why not? Right. You're both. I know. I just saw <laughs> oh, Chad hey. standing. He was. You did just it right. You went straight here. to no, the okay. seat. Just there. Chad, just man, good timing, Chad. Huh? Look, I, I have that effect on men. They run out the room. It's okay. My husband does it too. I uh, had a quick question about this project. I'm excited about this project, as are the neighbors, because it is going to improve drainage in that area, which yeah. is much needed. And thank you both for your assistance in making this happen. Uh, we've been working back and forth with the neighbors that this directly affects because this is their right of this is part of their property in the backyard that some edits will be made to. And so they were wanting and we've been working with them on uh, the proposed plat for this. Mm -hmm. We've only just received it and had right. it finalized and the residents are wanting or making the request for a deferral for this until next meeting. Uh, that way they can review it and just see if there's any major concerns or questions from the residents before we move forward, just in full transparency. Uh, I realize that this is up for the intro and we still have two more weeks till final, but an abundance of uh, courtesy to the residents who this is gonna directly affect and just to make sure that we have enough time and we don't rush something like this, especially when it is someone's backyard is, you know, two weeks, I'd, I'd appreciate the extra two weeks. So, uh, Sidra, you, can you confirm that we do indeed have the plat and it is available for viewing for the residents who want to see it? Yes, um, Mr. Neva, Director Neva did confirm that we just recently received mm -hmm. that. We have been communicating on this yep. for quite a while. Um, and so we did just recently receive that plat. So now would be the time for us to be able to meet with the residents to look at the right of way that we would, we would be looking to acquire from them. All right. let, me, let me chime in. Oh, absolutely. So, being that this is intro, I would ask that you not defer it. Mm -hmm. Let it go through on intro. Give us an opportunity to meet with the residents if we can. Of course, invite the very hardworking councilwoman to do to join us. <laughs> um, 
there's been a lot of conveyance open channel work in this area specifically mm -hmm. and I know that this is part of or at least has hopes of a um, an addition to our comprehensive plan for drainage so I would ask that we not defer it let's see if we can resolve any questions in the next two weeks and if we have to defer it the final adoption then we would respect that okay I'll I'll do that I'll, I'm happy to compromise because you're absolutely correct that if we don't my biggest concern was scheduling sure. between the administration, the department heads, and the residents. I know of six couples that are concerned that we've been dealing with directly. My concern is schedules. Sure. Is uh, I'm willing to do that, but if we need to defer next meeting because we haven't gotten everybody on board and on the same page, then we certainly can. So I'll take that suggestion. Um, if we can't, but just I request on behalf of the, pa the patients, a full-time job, y'all. Different job. Full on behalf of the residents, to uh, please let's make the time to meet with them within that two-week range. Certainly. Perfect. Yeah. And could, is there a way that you can email those plats to me? Or are they too big of a, a document? I will find out. Perfect. If you don't mind, that'd Absolutely. be helpful. That way they can review it. And if there is no issue, then no meetings are needed. Go from there. Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll remove my request for a defer okay. deferral, but I am going to ask my council members to please support this really important drainage project in my district. Thank you all. All right. So thank you. Sidra, I'll remove you as well. All right. So everybody's, we're good. We're going to go ahead and vote. Any, any uh, public comments on this? No, ma'am. Okay. Let's go ahead and vote then. District, District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. The motion to defer and to... Nope. It's introduced. Oh, the motion to introduce is approved. All right, thank you. Let's see, we're moving on to joint introductory ordinances. Uh, I need a motion and a second to introduce items 46 through 51. In Globo, I have um, Mr. Nake and a second for Mr. Lazard. Cindy, please read. Draw ordinance 16, 2022, a draw ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council are the rising the Lafayette Mayor present to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Lafayette Parish School Board for the joint use of recreational facilities. Draw Ordinance 17, 2022, a draw ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $1,619,072 from Fund 607 Group Hospitalization Fund to Fund 101 City General Fund for the actual payment to the Municipal Employees Retirement System. Draw Ordinance 18 2022, a draw ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council, authorizing the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to sell at a public internet auction surplus miscellaneous movable property, which are no longer needed to, for public purposes, as for the attached list internet auction. Draw Ordinance 19, 2022, a draw ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $10,000 in funds from Bridge Repairs Parish Budget Line Item to Ice Machine Replace One Budget Line Item for additional funding needed within the Traffic Roads and Bridges Department Street Division. Draw Ordinance 20, 2022, a draw ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council amending the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $3,549,084, including $2,661,813.75 percent received from the State of Louisiana Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness under the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, FEMA 4570-DR-LA Hurricane Delta Grant, $887,271, 25% match from Lafayette Consolidated Government, Public Works Parish Street Drainage Bridge Fund, and participating property owners for the acquisition or elevation of repetitive loss and severe repetitive mm -hmm. loss properties and construction of a drainage pond near Oak Spring subdivision and appropriating within the Community Development and Planning Department and authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to enter into intergovernmental agreements awesome with any municipalities in Lafayette Parish related to the acquisition, demolition, and subsequent transfer of properties acquired through the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. 
Journal Ordinance 21 2022, a journal ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council, amending the Lafayette Development Code, Chapter 89 of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances. Uh, not seeing any council discussion. Uh, Ms. Williams, any public comments on these? No, ma'am. Let's go ahead and vote to introduce in Globo items 46 through 51. District 5? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. The motion to introduce items 46 through 51 in Globo is approved. Thank you, Cindy. I adjourn the City Council meeting. <laughs>